Hi, and welcome to such a time as this. Well, you know, it is for such a time as that. Do you know that it is for such a time as this? Well, what does that mean? It is for such a time as this. Well, you know, we're getting closer and closer to end times. And what does end times mean? It means when the world will come to an end. It's when Jesus is going to come back. He's going to descend from heaven again and he'll come back and there'll be a time of reckoning. At that time, the Bible tells us that there will be people that will run to the mountains and the mountains will flee. But let me say that if you have not turned your life over to the Lord, you really, really should. There's nobody like him. I say that all the time, but truly. And I say that in, in the way I say it is because I know it for myself. I know there's nothing or anybody like him. And I know that he is a spirit. I, I refer to him as him. I, I think of him as a human being. But then you have to understand that we were made in his likeness. Okay, so we are a part of him. And he blew the, blew the breath of life into us, which gives us life. That's the reason why I can sit here and why I'm moving and why I can think and I can articulate. And I'm doing all of what I'm doing. I can see at the same time. I'm feeling at the same time. I'm, all of what I'm doing is because he is allowing me. And because he allows you, otherwise you would not be watching this show. You wouldn't have the means to watch it. There would not be this show. And so therefore, he is allowing all of this. He's operating. He's operating. And he's a God that's in our midst. The Bible tells us he's in the midst of his people. And even though you may not believe it, that your body is his temple. And because you're a living being, there is a part of him which dwells within you. And so we are his people. And he's going to come back because this, this world is filled with sin. And there will be a day of reckoning where the sinners and those who are not sinners will be separated. And the sinners will be cast into hell. And those who have not been sinned will be lifted up into glory for eternal life. It's in the book. And it's for such a time as this because we are nearing end times. It is, it's, it's, it's odd and, you know, kind of mystical or uh, humorous in that, you know, back in the day when Jesus was walking, and if you go way back, even before Jesus, that in particular, when it, uh, Saul, Saul says this, Paul says this, that they, that they were nearing end times. And, if, and they felt that then they were nearing. Jesus just ascended in Acts. And here is Paul, he's evangelizing, and he's saying then that he was seeing in signs. And so if you, if he realized that he was seeing in signs at that time, imagine how much closer we are at this time to the end of time. It is for such a time as this. We have to get ready for the Lord. And this program is that we may prepare ourselves. And one of the ways in which we prepare ourselves to get closer and closer to the Lord but is by getting deeper into the word of the Lord. That we might study to know what he desires of us. That we might not go down into the pits of hell. That we might survive this mess called the and I hate to call it a, a mess, but that is, what, that is what it has become. The world has become a mess. It is not what God has created it to be. But it's steeped in sin, and sin is raging. It is raging. And if we want to be victorious over this life, and we want to have victory at the end, there will be some of us who will not have died, that he will come back and we will see that day, the day of reckoning. There will be some of us in the grave and we will be risen from the grave. But if you decide, desire that you have victory over this life, that you have eternal life with God and not be cast down into hell for eternity, you have to receive him in your life. You have to turn over your life to the Lord. You have to give it, give it to him. Surrender yourself to the Lord and allow him to do a magnificent work in you. You have to proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God. You have to believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You have to believe that there was somebody named Jesus, that he did walk the face of this earth, that he did do massive miracles, 
that he came and he taught and he preached and he te- and he had 12 disciples. You have to believe that he lived. And because he lived, we are able to live beyond this. Because he surrendered his life and laid it down that we might live. You have to believe in him. If you are somebody who believes in Muhammad, if you believe in Buddha, if you believe in, those are men who created mankind, God. Almost everybody can agree that there is a God. Some religions believe that there's somebody greater than Jesus, but there is none because he is part of the, the Bible tells us, our holy book, the holy Bible tells us that in the beginning was the word. And in John 1 tells us that the word was with him when he created everything, God created everything. And who was the word? The word was Jesus Christ that manifested and came back into this world, came down in flesh and blood and laid his life down on Calvary. It is in the word of the Lord and we must study it for ourselves. You have to study the word of the Lord. You have to study it. The Bible says that faith comes through hearing. So you cannot just sit in your house and read your Bible. You must find a good church with a firm foundation rooted in the things of the Lord, where they teach the unadulterated word of the Lord, where the men and the women are serving the Lord. You must be rooted and you have to be under good teaching. You have to be under good teaching in order for a development to truly happen in you. It is amazing that when God this called me out. He had already selected where he wanted me to be saved. He had already provided the person that was going to lead me to where he wanted me to be saved. It's amazing. I'm in a New York City, a million people, and here's Shirley Jones Realty. <laughs> I'm coming back into New York to produce my film, and I'm driving and looking for a production office that would be a makeshift apartment while I shot the film. And here I go into one real estate after going through newspapers and looking at apartment and looking at apartment and finally I go into a real estate office. And the real estate office is on a street, Fulton Avenue, down near downtown Brooklyn, Fulton and Lafayette Avenue. And in that area it is right there, right there in that one little corner there's like five real estate, one little block, five real estate offices if not more right there at Fulton Street, where Lafayette crosses it. And one of them was a little tiny, it didn't even look as good as the rest. (laughs) And, And I actually didn't even see the rest until I walked out of that particular one. It said Shirley Jones Realty, and I had a parking spot right in front of it. And I walk into it, and that real estate office was owned by somebody who came from the town that I was born in, in Florida. She knew my family, and I didn't even know it at the time I walked in there. I didn't have a clue of that. She used to have midday prayer in her real estate office. She pulled down the sign, put a sign in the door that said close. For half an hour, she'd be on her knees in her office, which was very small, I, could not, I, I can't even begin to tell you how, uh, what, what the size, what the diameter of it was, but I can't even begin to tell you. But it was very small. And so, um, <laughs> it was, so she'd get down on, on her knees and she'd pray. And she invited me, you know, I came in, I fill out the application and I'm asking her, you know, can you help me find, you know, get me an apartment, I'm looking, da 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 da. And, she, you know, and she called me up and told me she had something she wanted me to look at. And she, one day I go out with her. It was like like the next day or something, and um, and so when we drive around. She shows me two, and one of them I really like, and that's the one I end up getting. And it really was out of my price range, but I liked it, and God allowed me to have it, and He gave it to me. <laughs> it's amazing. 
And um, where it was, where that apartment was, and she was right around the corner right there. And my apartment's here, and she's right there. And I was sitting at that computer working on my screenplay, trying to get my production notes together. And, and my eyes would go to the, cl the clock on the computer, and it would say 12 o'clock, and I knew that was when Shirley was having prayer. And my mind would tell me, get up and go to prayer. <laughs> and I was so removed from being in the Lord, so removed from wanting to be in the Lord, so removed from wanting to go pray with anybody, so removed from wanting to seek the Lord or to seek anything of the Lord. But here is God putting in me the desire to get up. I'd get up, go shower, get dressed, go downstairs, walk to her, go to her office, walk in just in time as she's getting ready to pray. And she had invited me to her church, and lo and behold, if she was not cold chicken. <laughs> Amazing. Same denomination, everything. Inviting me to her church. I'm not thinking about going to her church since she invited me. Several times, invited, whenever she would see me, she would invite me. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about my film. I'm thinking about my girlfriend. I'm thinking about all these things that were involved because I was in you know, homo a lesbian lifestyle, so a homosexual lifestyle. And so I was not thinking about the Lord. I was thinking about doing my thing. And so here I am, and God has orchestrated this thing, and I'm, one day she needed a ride, and I give her a ride with her client to go see some apartment, to drop the her, take her and the client to an apartment. And um, she begins to talk, and I hear something that sounds familiar, and I say, where are you from? And she began to tell me she, that she was from Fort Lauderdale, and then I said, and I, we're close to that. And I said, I told her where we were from, and she started to howl. howl and scream and burst out into laughter and said that she was from there. A billion people in New York City, tons of real estate offices, and the one I walk into is somebody who knew my aunt, went to school with my aunts and my uncles, knew my grandmother by name, knew my family. Millions of people in New York City, millions, and one little real estate office by somebody from a little, small, unknown town. And the only real estate office I walked into was hers. Didn't know it, but I realized when I was listening to her tell me where she was from and as she was laughing, when I listened to it and the stories coming in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this is not by accident not even thinking that I'm going to be saved or that I was going to go to a church because I'm not even there yet. I'm not thinking about that. It's not in my mind. I'm not considering that. But it was in God's mind, and it's what happened. It's what materialized later, and I got saved in her church. Unbelievable the way God will operate. And we don't even know he's operating. We don't even see him. He gives us a yes or no opportunity. We can. He gives us control to, to do or to not to do. But then he'll put those things in our path that will get him his yes. He got his yes from me. He had to draw it out. But he knew what to do, and he got it. And, he, and it wasn't that he, I was forced to do anything. I had freedom of will, and it was on my own free will, but he orchestrated my will to be his will, to do what he was willing me to do, what his will was for me. He is God. He's powerful like that. We don't even see him operating. We don't even know he's operating when he's operating. And he's operating in all of our lives all of the time. And we don't see it. And so many times things are going wrong and we believe that, you know, we're, it, they could have been worse, but God kept it from being worse. And sometimes later, years later, and you look back and realize, and I look back on my life after I got saved and I realize how he had been operating in my life all of my life. I realized how he had been operating. I had never seen it. He's God. Turn your life over to the Lord. Let him do a thing in you. Let him make you a new thing. I am a new thing in the Lord. 
Because of him, I am a new creature. I don't look the same. I don't talk the same. I'm, I do not have the same interests. I don't listen to the same music. I don't go to the same places. My interests and my tastes and everything about me has changed because I'm not what I used to be. I'm a new creature. And I give God glory and honor because without him I would not be. I would still be doing what I used to do because I didn't have a mind to want to do anything else. But God saw something in me and he saw something that was greater than what I wanted for me. He saw him in my life. He saw what he could use me for, how he could mold me and shape me. He saw how he could frame me. And he saw how I would walk and I would talk. He saw how I could be with my Lord Jesus. I thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. I thank him. I praise him. I worship him. I adore him. Allow God to come in your life and change you. Allow him to come in and do a marvelous work in you. He is marvelous. He is marvelous. And all that he does is marvelous. It is for such a time as this. God bless you and we will see you the next time.
God some praise. If you got the Holy Ghost, come on and give God some praise. Is there anybody here that's really got the Holy Ghost? I'm talking about the tongue-talking Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost, just look at somebody and say, I got it like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm saved and sanctified and filled with God's precious Holy Ghost and that with the mighty burning fire. And I do speak in tongue as the Spirit give utterance. Did anybody get the Holy Ghost like that? Hallelujah. I, don't, I know y'all tired of me saying it, but I got mine on Tuesday morning prayer meeting. And they told me to keep saying, thank you, Jesus. And I kept saying, thank you, Jesus. And they said, say it faster. And I kept saying it faster until after a while, my tongue got away from me. And I began to speak in a tongue that was unknown to myself. Y'all ain't hearing nothing I said. And I'm glad I got it like that instead of going to a class and paying a registration fee to learn how to speak in a tongue because I found out that those folk that they paid that registration fee, they'll speak in tongue in church and cuss you out on the parking lot. You are freaking kidding me. He fumes starting to pace and throw his arms into the air. You're kidding me, right? I know this has got to be a joke. And I don't have any clothes. And no, it is not a joke. And rest assured that you won't be the first person to ever walk through the streets of New York City in a row, or butt naked for that matter. However you choose to do it, but you are leaving out of here, and now. Can I be real for a minute? This life can pull on you, man. The bishop's, bishop's wife. wife. She's, She's marrying a bishop, but her mind won't let her leave trail. trail. Radical. Radical, the bishop's wife, on sale now. The, the bishop's, bishop's wife, wife by, by Bernadine, Bernadine Smith. Smith.